This is another New Black World Order TV Productions. I have my family with me. My Moorish brother, Brother L. What's happening, brother? Okay, Bait. Brother Bait. Cujo, known as on YouTube. What's happening, brother? What we doing today? Speak up. What's going on, man? What you want to start? Nothing much, man. Um, first, we're we, we going to talk about a number of things today, man. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the Tazariak <laughs> and Polite Beef. What do you think about that? Crossing the line or not crossing the line? It was a bunch of talk at the end of the day. It was a bunch of talk. <laughs> and they just both running their mouth. I mean, that's all it was, man. That's I mean, I seen it. You know, I seen it when it happened. And I can understand where the, um, the Hebrew dude. I can understand where he was coming from. You know, but at the same time, man, that's petty. That's petty. You know what I'm saying? That's petty. I mean, they're just they were back and forth. That's petty. Don't nobody really want to chat down over nothing. Nothing violent for real. You know what right. I'm saying? Don't right. Right. Don't nobody want it for real. If they if they're that mature, they realize that nobody really wants it. You know what I'm saying? That's it's just that's frivolous. That's frivolous. If that's they just. Whatever. If it's good, you know, if it's entertaining and it, and it get people interested, that's a good thing. You know, if it's inviting you to start thinking, then that's a good thing. Exactly. I can't look at it as, as a total negative, but you know, at the same time, you know, it's just this a goddamn squabble between men. It happens. You know? Right, right, right. Because you know, men yeah. clash. Yeah, human beings clash. You right. Know what I'm saying? We, right. We tend to ignore that. You know, women are vital as well. You know, what I'm saying women are killers just as men are killers. You know, it's, it's, it's truly. You know, in the nature of the power, you know, you do what you got to do. Okay. You have to respect it. Okay. All right. So, you don't have nothing against the debates. You just have something against the over-emotionalism and the rhetoric. No, I mean, not even the over-emotionalism. I can understand it. You know, I'm just saying whether or not I would engage in it. And okay. I can down them for doing it. You know, I right. understand. It's cool. They want to, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, not wrong with it, but there are things, you know, at the same time that it, it's unnecessary. You know, but for me, me personally, you know, I don't. I would not want to engage in that. Okay. Simply because it's, it's you know, but again, if it, it if it attracts people to it, you know what I'm saying? If it bring the, the if it bring the flies to the shit, you know, keep on shitting, you know what I'm saying? Cause right, right, right. Because I think that's the... Yeah, and uh, people like controversy. They like know? controversy. We, we're bred on controversy. Right, you know what right. I'm we're bred on it, you know, and that, that's just the, 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 the culture we've been subjected to that we kind of, you know, we yearn for conflict. <laughs> Really wants it. Nobody really okay. wants that type of conflict nah, in their life. Really and if they do, if they think they do, they're a fool. But you know, when you when when you see the conflict, you can kind of live vicariously through it. You know, and that's what people do. I think. Sometimes. Okay. I still attract it. All right. Um, I see you on Facebook a lot in a lot of the different rooms where our people congregate at and share information. Yeah. And um, since you carry the title Bay, are you a more? I mean. I would be a more person on one's definition to hear any of them say it, you know what I'm saying? I would be a more. Okay. But as far as me saying I'm a, a member of the Moore Sign Temple, no, I'm not. So you wouldn't I was, be. I was. I was raised in You the was raised in the temple. I was raised in the temple. I mean, I was born in the temple. And you attended Sunday school. Yeah, I went to Sunday school. Right, went and you Fridays, went. Okay. Fridays, yeah, awesome, yeah, know? me too. I went yeah. Monday, awesome. Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yeah. I went the whole night. I went to little trips, you know, to Aiken, South Carolina, to right. Pittsburgh. You know, Temple Number Six, Richmond, Virginia. You know okay. No question. I mean, I respect them. Okay. You know what I'm saying I respect them, but I mean, when I was younger, you know, I I, I was kind of turned off by some things, you know. But I ain't, I'm not going to, you know, attack the temple. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like it was my springboard. You know what I'm saying? It got me. It made me think. You know what I'm right, saying? It didn't right. Right. Necessarily get me outside of the box. Like many of us like to think we're outside of the box, but most of us only are aware that a box is there. You know what I'm saying? So I can say I got that with the more Sign Temple, you know what I'm saying? And it always kind of put me in contrast to people because of my dietary practice right. or whatever. So, I've been knowing you for yeah, years. You've been a pretty good brother ever since I've known you. Well, yeah, that's my we go back about 10, 15 years or better. About 20 years, actually. Yeah, yeah. And this was on what? This was in the 90s. And I'd like to say for the record to all those on Facebook, this ain't no Facebook more right here. This ain't no YouTube more revolutionary. This brother actually do this shit for real. Yeah, yes, I mean, but right. That, you know, I use that as a springboard. I think. I mean, and I appreciate it. You know, but it, it was certain things. You know, about it that I always question. Like it was certain things that I always question. Period. But I got into a more traditional type of Islam. You know, mega salad and all that. Then luckily, actually, I would say I came across an Ansari doctrine. Okay. You know what I'm saying when um in the early 90s I came across that. You know, before Dr. Yoko 
Well, he was always Dr. Yo, but you know, when it was the answer, right. right. I can't do that, and that was kind of exactly what I was looking for, you know. Because okay. I wanted to be a Muslim, you know. I wanted to be like the six million or so Muslims upon the planet, but them they won't, them niggas won't black enough, you know what I'm saying? They right. Black enough. And they ain't have yeah, the answers for your questions. Yeah, I mean they, I mean they, they answer they per their own understanding of it. You right. know what I'm saying? I can't take anything away from them for that. But the bottom line is, for me, it wasn't black enough. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't black enough. I mean. And that's what I got out of the temple, really, because it made me, you know, view my own people, even though, you know, they would use confusing terms like Asiatic and blah, blah, blah. And Asiatic became to be synonymous with nigga or whatever after a while in some conversation. Okay. But um, it still gave me that blackness, you know what I'm saying? So when I, you know, got into Islam and the Dr. York, you know what I'm saying, the Dr. York stuff, well, uh, you know, the... Um, Isa, Isa, right. You know what I'm saying? When I got the that, Nubian Islamic yeah, Nubian Hebrew, Hebrew mission. mission. Yeah. yeah. So I got into that, and then when he was like HTM, you know what I'm saying? I read up on that. And I the Holy Tabernacle Ministry. Down the street, actually, when they were on. Um, Oh, on Gray Street. On Gray Street. Yeah. Right. On Gray there used to be an old yeah. hole in the wall type yep. um, bar right joint. Downstairs. Right. That's when they're um, like in 92. When the whole right knowledge thing came out. And they I call it that. the tab. Yeah, the tab. T A B. Yeah. That was fun, man. Makes right. sense. T A B, right? Yeah. Politing them on sign out of TV, call themselves the adjustment bureau. Oh, okay. T A B. Tab. Oh wow. Everybody didn't catch that. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Nobody that caught that. that. that good. Right? Tab. That pretty observant. The adjustment that. bureau. Yeah, but that was, you know, I I mean I enjoyed that, man, because it made me start. You know, it, it, it made me start questioning Islam when I hadn't questioned Islam. And Islam limited me. Because when I would read about Africa, you know, I would read about Africa from an Islamic perspective. So I would right. read about the kings of Mali, you know, and Songhay. And, but I would look down on uh, Sony Bird because he did never, con you know, never became a Muslim. You know, okay. I would look down on those figures and not read up on them as much. But, you know... Because religion put, religion yeah, put blinders on you. It definitely does. Yeah, it put it blinders on you. It gives you a perspective that you aren't born with. You know, you don't even develop in the perspective. You just conform to the perspective. Right, you right. It's, 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 a, it's um acculturation. Right. You, you yeah. become, it becomes a part of you. So, right. Like, that, um, so it made me start, you know, questioning Islam. And then when I start questioning Islam, um, you know, being from Richmond, being in the early 90s, being as young as I was, I still got caught up in shit out here. You know right, what I'm saying? I right. got caught up in shit out here, you know what I'm saying? Just regular, regular shit that goddamn young niggas do. On right. the real shit, you know what I'm saying? I was just caught up because, you know, money became my standard. You know right. what I'm saying? Money yeah. became, you know, the only thing that matter. You can look look at shit and not think about it. Right. And not feel bad about it because at the end of the day, you just live in this capitalist mentality that it tells you to consume, consume, consume. It's all yours. Exactly. Get it. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, I mean, Got I'm to not, get it. You know, exactly. <laughs> so that's how I was thinking. You know what I'm right. saying? My perspective has since changed, but however I'm young. Started getting into shit, you know, guns and drugs and shit, and I said, "Fucking!" Instead of going to jail, you know, I went to the military. And when I went to the military, like every time I came home, you know, what I'm saying I'm hopping on the different books, you know, whatever book it was, I'm hopping on it, you know, what I'm saying buying all the shit from the tag. But at the same time, when I was in the military, I was around other people from other places, and I started seeing the kinship I had with people that I never thought I had because I viewed myself as a Muslim and as a more. Therefore, I was different. You know, I didn't grow up with the gospel music and shit. You know, right. that wasn't part of my development. You know, even though they pretty much worship Jesus as well, still the Jesus story. You know, I, I, I wasn't all for it like the Christians. So I was always in con in conflict with them. Right. But when I was in the military, you know, I came across cats that you know, though we believe different. You know, they dress different than that did. They, but they were still cool niggas. You know, by their own right. nigga from Mississippi, right. nigga from um, Texas, nigga from Alabama, Florida. You know what I'm saying? And I just noticed, man, how similar it was to just the way I grew up. And just seeing that and not necessarily having, you know, the internet at the time. So I didn't have a constant flood of anyone's books. You know, I had to right. get books on my own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I went to Korea and I didn't have access to, to Doc. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have access to it. So I read all the Zach Zacharias Sessions. Yeah, you yeah. The 12th plan. I read all of those shit. I read the whole, you know, I was really interested in that shit. Yeah. Time. You know what I'm saying? At that time. But um, it, it, I just started developing a perspective all on my own, you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't ever consider myself like an adherent of any type of, you know, like you said, the Wabian or something now, now. Now, I never really even considered myself, but I, ha I have to say that I was 
I was transfixed by that shit for a minute. Right, you was adjusting. You know but at the same time, right. I've always been a skeptic, you know what I'm saying? My grandfather, I put that on my grandfather, you know, my family, we from Virginia, you know what I'm saying? And this is the seat. You know, people like to point to other places, and we like to look to other places. But this we is like the seat. We like to get places to Cretans. No, but the seat is here. Right. The majority of black people in this country. All right. The majority of black people in this country, period, have roots in Virginia. Yeah, they came and through Shaco Bottom. They came right majority. through Shaco Bottom right here down in the bottom. Yeah, we, the, the colony of Virginia imported more Africans than any other colony. Right, and they came through here, Virginia. then they was dispersed out of Virginia right. to other places. And for the, and for Virginia and actually, Richmond and actually Charleston. You know, Charleston was a close second and at times would exceed them. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, and that's a, the, the two different types of blacks, or blacks in the United States rather, are from Virginia and the other half are from South Carolina. You know, right. because South Carolina imported people from a certain region. You know what I'm saying? They imported more people from, um, from the, uh, the Sierra Leone, the Mindy people who dealt with rice because that was their main cash crop. That was their staple. Yeah, that was their staple, exactly. So that's okay. where they, they, they import a lot of people from there. That's how come they maintain elements of the Geechee. You know, because they, they infer, at first we imported people, the United States rather, imported people from Angola. Well, before it was the United States. Uh, Angola into South America and South Carolina and Virginia. Okay. And then later, they moved up to Sierra Leone and into, uh, what is it, Gambia. Gambia, Senegal, you know, the Glory Coast. Uh, Nigeria, that's what the British, what is that? The, the Apple Royal Company or whatever, how is it? Okay, okay. But the majority of us have roots here. The majority right. of us have roots here. I mean, if you're from New York, you're only from New York for a few generations. Either you're from, your family from the South, or you're from the Caribbean. Right. You know, someone from the Caribbean. And, and I, I hear a lot of them like to point out their Caribbean ancestry as if that makes a difference. But that's another example of why black people, and people in general in this country, try to uh, distance themselves between what we consider niggas. You know right, right. Like they not yeah, know kin to us. The nigga, the nigga exists in the minds of us at least. The nigga exists in the South. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we all try to distance ourselves from that when we need to be embracing this shit because this is us. You can say go to any church, you know, when niggas singing and they feeling and you can down them for having the spirit and call it what you want to call it. But the fact is, them niggas in there doing something for nothing. You know what I'm saying? The majority of them doing so. You might have them niggas making money, but the majority of them, them doing something for nothing. Ain't getting paid. They ain't getting a damn thing for it. They playing in the choir. They going. So they're there. genuine they, in they, their they belief. They're genuine in their belief. So you got to respect that. And you see the spirit that come out of that. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. deeper than what they're singing about. It's the fact that we harmonizing and goddamn vibing with each other. And we miss that when we start doing these these different these different religions. You know, we're taking the emotion out of the human being. You know, because right. this man told us that logical thinking is the only way to think. It's a way to think, it's not the only way to think. It's not the only way. We've been, we've been for the last 400 years, totally incorporating this man's perspective. So the only thing we want to do is get rich and do the same shit that he's doing. You know, that's the dream of the Hebrew, to turn the tables. You know right. what I'm saying, that's what they say. And take the master's place. And, and a doctrine that promotes that is counterproductive to society in general. You know what I'm saying? It's counterproductive. The reason they wanted to free slavery is the North wanted, didn't want slaves. Well, they didn't give a fuck, but they didn't want slaves in their colonies. The reason they didn't want it is because it it disenfranchised the poor white man. Right, because how could the white man, poor white man, yeah, get a he, job? Yeah, how could how he, can work? he work if it's free labor? How could he work? I mean, it's like this. You got, you got a uh, 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 damn, you got a uh, blacksmith shop right here owned by some old white dude. But you can go to so-and-so plantation and this nigga do it for cheap. It's like Walmart and the convenience store. You see what I'm saying? You can't compare the two. So what that did, what's up, Vic? What's up, Vic? What that did was that, that took away, that took away from, they couldn't develop. You know what right. I'm saying? They couldn't develop. Right. What's up, King? Hey, what are you doing, man? Get off, stick shit. Turn that right. Roll the clip. So, sir. Oh, I'm still, yeah.
All right, King. Hey, I need to go to the damn call center. Well, that's that's good. Okay, my next Not question. Bad, you good? You good? That's all right. My next question. You know, we own the media, so we can do it the way we want. Okay. So my next question is: Does more science deal with masonry? Yeah, that's all. And what's the difference between masonry and more science, and masonry and Prince Hall? I mean, we can get into the, you know, the little uh, distinct, you know, differences or whatever. But in, in all in all, all in all, you know, I believe, you know what I'm saying? And this is just what I think, what I believe. I believe that, you know, Morsheim Temple pretty much took uh, Masonic doctrine and, you know, gave it to you, you know, without you having to be a Mason, pretty much. You know, that's okay. what it looks like to me. So was it designed to replace them? I mean, in a sense, because it was, I mean, you got to learn, you learn structure from the world around you. You know, you don't just start doing things for, for, for no reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Human beings aren't born with the, aren't born, you know, you're born ready to learn. You're not born necessarily knowing, you know what I'm saying? So we learn, you know, we learn cohesion and, and shit from shit like masonry. So it should, we incorporated it because we, we viewed it as an orderly thing. Like I can completely, completely understand why things like the Nation Islam existed at the time. Okay. I can completely understand. I can completely because understand. they also use Mason. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's it. And um, in a while. Yeah, it's the same. In the UNI. Yeah. Yeah. For in the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. But I mean, but at the same time, there's a reason, and and I think the reason is it was a a, a type of order. Because like, no matter what, whenever you look at a at a um, if you look at the NOI, you see how they talk to their congregation. You know, you look at the, the temple, the Morsheim Temple, the way they speak to their congregation. It's still the same thing you see in church. You know what I'm saying? Because we learn that order from there, so we take it and you know we make it our own. Yeah, we like, start. Like, like we think we did with Christianity, even when it comes down to the Hebrew level. You know what I'm saying? We think we've taken that belief and made it our own. You know, we believe that. Right. We totally accept that. Right. We made it our own. You know what I'm saying? We and so we don't question it because we look at it as a as a default thing. You know. I get very uh, irritated when I talk to cats from up north, but they always put it on like niggas in the south this and, you know, I'm like, cat, you know, I've hold been on, there. Hold I've on, hold on. Right. I've been to New York. You know right. what I'm saying? I've been right. to New York. It's I've some slow military. people in New York. Very, very, very. Yeah. It was absolutely no difference. I remember I expected the difference because right. I was indoctrinated in the same school they were pretty much. If it wasn't yeah. for Virginia, man, yeah, not Virginia. New York would have no 5% swagger at all. Yeah, Clarence is from, Clarence from Virginia. Is from Danville. Yeah. I mean, everybody's from the South. I mean, yeah. nobody's at least from North Carolina. And one time, uh, in this area where me and you live at, there were more UNIA chapters than anywhere in the country. In the South, especially. It was more in the South than anywhere. And Richmond did have a very large one. And it was actually right around the street. Yeah. Right yeah. around the street. And there's also another one. On First right Street, First mm -hmm. and um, Baker right Street, too. Wall, right at the corner of Face and Baker. My oh, family oh, had that house. Yeah, My no, family no, rented no, that no. house. You feel me? My family helped start some of the first chapters of the Black Panther Party right here in Richmond. And, you know, back to the Masonic thing, isn't it funny that the Hebrew Israelites say they don't like Masons? Yeah. But mean, Matthew Ford Wentworth was a Mason himself. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, they just, they, they, you know, of course they're going to try to distance themselves from it because of all the negative connotations that's, uh, that's, you know, that's, all the negative con connotations that masonry receives now, you know what I'm saying? So of course you're gonna wanna destiny yourself from it. But right. again, it was only a, a way of order that we learned. You know, we incorporated and made it our own. You know, all those Satan right. and all that shit. Who wouldn't want even goddamn fairy tales and God to believe in that shit. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't right. believe in that. Now listen. Who who say they don't like uh Masons is the Hebrew Israelites. And the Hebrew Israelites The Hebrew Israelites and other organizations that teach an anti-Masonic doctrine, it's, it behooves me, I'm like it, it just, it baffles me that the founders of the organizations that are now espousing that doctrine of an anti-Masonic doctrine was founded, their founders happen to be Masons. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I see it, but I don't necessarily even see the irony in it. I mean, it's... It's just a fraternal organization at the end of the day, you know, and if you want to say, I don't you know, fuck all that, you know, money controls shit, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what niggas worship, niggas worship money. Okay. Money controls shit, you know what I'm saying? That money that's on that flow. Yeah, that's it. That's what controls shit. It's money on that flow, baby. Illuminati shit. I don't need 
think about a secret organization that's trying to do shit. It's obvious what's happening. Right. You know? But now, here we go. Speaking of a secret organization, of all these different organizations that claim that they want to replace, overthrow the white man's system, how can they do it with people that can't keep secrets? See, this is my point. Most of the groups talk against having a secret society. They talk against people who can keep secrets. But in order to pull off a revolution, you're going to have to be able to keep a what? <laughs> you got to keep it to yourself, yeah. I mean, it's pretty... Right? That's, that's what, it that makes sense, don't it? They have all these... You know, everybody gets so bold and talking and all that, but they'll do shit. You can't know. even give your girlfriend a surprise birthday party unless you can keep a secret. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. You, I don't know, man. You know, yeah. You don't realize what we up against. Like, right, um, and... I mean, right, we're and, not even halfway organized to the point to talk about all conflict with any group. You right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we got... We got a lot of heart. We feel ourselves, but you know we have to really. That's when that logical mind does have to come into. into right, place. because the only reason, the only reason why we can't win against the white man right now in the armed um, confrontation, is because we don't have no unity. We don't have any unity. Man, it ain't a weapon thing, because if we switch from religion, if we switch from religion to science and technology, we can produce a weapon to humble his ass. I mean, yeah, that's point. Yeah, that's point yeah, blank, ain't yeah. it? The thing is, the thing is. You that's know true. Man? That's if true. We develop solidarity, you know. That we wouldn't have to necessarily. Oh, yes, you will. Because hmm. he's going to test you on let it. Let me explain. Let, let me explain. Oh, yeah, he will test you. But you got to make it stronger than you. You know what I'm no, saying? Listen. You got to make it stronger than you. You got to make it stronger than you to the point. Here's the prophecy. So, so much they say, you know, if it happens to me. They say Kimmy don't, don't make prophecies. Own. They say Kimmy don't have no prophecies. Or the black movement don't have no prophecy. Here's the prophecy. Even after y'all unite, economically, socially, all of that. You still gonna have to produce a weapon because he coming after oh, your man. ass. No, I mean protecting yourself is always. Uh, no, I'm talking about you're gonna have to produce a technology him. greater than nuclear technology I mean, uh, to I mean, make him humble. To I make him humble. It. That's a and prophecy. That's a prophecy. And I can understand that. And watch it come true. What, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I mean, we don't need to. We just need to have some type of solidarity and cohesiveness amongst ourselves. Did Black Wall and Street have that? I mean, they had it in a system that was, in the end, designed to swallow up everything regardless. No matter how successful you think you are, the he, bottom line is he coming. You're, just as, you're just as complicit in the system as the Africans you down when you say African soul of Africans. You're just as complicit in the system no matter what because this system you hear that, every is facet lights. and every <laughs> facet is developed to to make the, li the, the lives of those, the rich and those in control, easier. You know what I'm saying? Everything. And that's how it was done with the slave trade as well. We're just as complicit. I mean, all of us. So it's just to, to, to be, uh, and of course you should have some type of, um, nothing wrong with having wealth, but we can't let their way of looking at the world destroy us because what has it done thus far? It's destroying the planet. You know what I'm saying? And I could go into it further to even say that it's not something that's innate in a, in, in a white person. You know, they became like that. They weren't always like that. We like to think they were because it fits our narrative. Because all we attempt to do is juxtapose what they gave to us back on to them. So when they want to call us apes, we're like, no, 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 y'all look more like apes. You got more of the research monkey and all that shit. You understand? We, we do the same thing. We just throw it right back at them. Well, fuck that. We don't need to look at ourselves from their perspective. So Minister Minister Inge, Minister Inge is wrong when he says that the white I man came so. from a yeah, Reese's that's, monkey? That's silly. That's just silly. <laughs> that's just plain silly. That's just plain silly. That's plain silly. I mean, you can't prove anything. Like so why do they come up with this terminology RNA? RH factor? Yeah. You're talking about the RH RNA. Factor? RNA is ribonucleic acid, which is okay. a, a, one of the components of um, deoxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA. So no, RNA is just, you mean R, the RH factor, when they talk about the rhesus monkey. Because it was first found in a rhesus monkey. Okay. From, that's all that is. I mean, that's why they named it that. Why would you name something that's going to incriminate you or make you look like a monkey down the road? I mean, the system not that pervasive that we're going to include this in it and then it's going to, they're going to figure it out. No, man, come on, man. That's silly. Right. Okay. Just a silly Santa Claus. Let's switch it up again. What do you think about Minister Inky comment that the planet belongs to white people and that we're not from here, we're from the stars? I had a problem. <laughs> I had a serious problem with that statement. Because, because, hey, cool. other than that, money. other than that, I respect Minister Inky. Think he's a very intelligent brother. Um, I learned a lot from him. But when he made that statement, it threw me back. It threw me back because how can you correct a status on earth 
to some people that don't belong to this planet. It, it, yeah, that's it, funny. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, I don't know. Of course, I don't stand up. No, I don't want that for me. I mean, come on, we're, we're totally adapted to our environment. You know what I'm saying? We're totally adapted from, the, from our coily hair to our complexion. We, you know, we're totally to the, the various types of Africans. Totally, you know. I'm not giving the planet up. Oh, no, this not, my this I will make this my home. This is the realest thing we have, you know what I'm saying? We thinking all this other shit, but this planet is real and that's what we fucking up. We're fucking right. up the very world. Because it appears to me that was the ploy of religion. To make us give up the planet and look for something up in the sky. Then, I mean not only that, Christianity as a whole or any type of biblical tradition, including Islam, it, it kinda it makes the earth a thing. You know what I'm saying? If you say earth in Hebrew, you say epic. I think that that's how they pronounce it. In, in Arabic, it's out of duty. And that shit means floor or ground as well. You know, you're just looking at it as the floor or the ground. You know, when we said things in our language, it's for the for earth. You know what I'm saying? It was something a lot more uh, what, endearing. We have more endearing terms for the planet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When you just view it as ground, and the, and the Bible tells you, you know, you can take, um, you know, it's, it's yours. You you have complete, complete dominion over the earth. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Bible tells you anyway. So you, you believe that everything is yours to take and do whatever you want to do with it. When, you know, that that, that doesn't enhance a type of balance, a type of harmony that has to exist in right. nature. Right, right. So once you become... It, it actually makes you have less respect for nature. Yeah, definitely. Right. You know, because these trees are for you, you know. You're not thinking about the, the fact that trees provide shade, but fuck how it is for you. You know, fuck what it does for you. It produces oxygen, but fuck what it does for you. I mean, it, it's, it's a good thing anyway. You know what I'm saying? I mean, other animals live on the tree. The tree itself is alive, you know. I mean, if you gotta move a tree, you gotta move a tree, but at the same time, just the reckless abandon, we attack the planet. And we've adopted their same way of thinking. All we wanna do is take because we believe we're supposed to. But it's silly. It's a very, I mean, no one stops to think about it. You know, but that's what Christianity, because you, Christianity, Islam, all that shit, they gave you, you know, you'll have dominion over the earth. The earth is yours. But no, you don't, the earth is not yours. You belong well, to the earth. That's what Minister Inky was saying that there are only two forms of life on the earth extraterrestrial and terrestrial mm -hmm. and he said because the white man is terrestrial mm -hmm. that would explain why he walks around as if the earth belongs to him no I mean, he said because technically it does mm -hmm. and he can have it okay but look but see the thing is the thing with that is you got to go pre pre-christian europe if you really want to find the answer to that did the druids view the earth as theirs you know what i'm saying did the various celtic and german tribes view the earth as theirs before right. they became Christian, this mentality wasn't something that was born in Christianity. Even to the likes of Alexander the Great, people like to talk about him, call him a faggot and all this shit. But the bottom line is, he didn't even have that opinion. He put no, he put no providence on the fact that he was white. You know, that's something that came much later. That's something that they used recently, you know, to justify their action. Well, to make it look as though it's a natural thing. You know, they just happen to be like that because they're white. And we can't fall into that way of thinking because that type of thinking, it influences us to believe that things can just be, that nothing develops. When all over the universe, everything is a, a, a evolving of cause and effect. We're right. all products of cause and effect. Everything, everybody. So to say somebody's born to be a particular type of way is, in my opinion, my very humble opinion, is like an admission by the individual that there exists something that creates on its own. Okay. When, when that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's bullshit. You become. Not one of these dudes out here who think he's gay was born like that. Not one. Said I wanted to stay away from it, but not one. Yeah. To say this, to say that you can be born gay would imply that you can be born Spanish, or to imply that you can be born. Anything. So you believe you that homosexuality born... is nurtured rather than natured? I mean, it's nurtured. It's nurtured as much as knowing a language is nurtured. But it's you know in nature man? too. Yeah, well, no, it's in nature. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, you're saying like it. Yes, it is. Itself occurs in nature. Yeah, it does. It as being a viable lifestyle does not occur in nature. You see what I'm saying? Let me explain. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let Hold me on. explain. Let me explain the viable okay. lifestyle. Let me, okay. Well, you tell me. Tell me a viable life, uh, an animal that. Examine ducks. Okay. Okay. The duck, the male duck lives his entire life with a boyfriend. Okay. Okay. His okay. entire life. Does it? Does it? Does it have Listen. sex with female ducks? Yeah, it does. Okay. So For what I'm saying is, what For, I'm saying is. Just but she we're is. Looking at it from a but human she is. Hold on. We're looking at it from a human perspective. Okay. We're looking at fucking ducks. From a human perspective, and because he's hanging with this male duck all the time, and you see them playing or whatever the fuck you do, dolphins too. Dolphins do it as well. Dolphins do it too. But masturbation. So what I'm saying is, if, if when they call themselves gay, when people call them, they say oh. that there's something that. So if are. you, if you, I'm saying the act on, itself is natural, but to say that you are like that naturally. So is if you, if you fucking a woman and a man, it's not homosexuality; it's masturbation. 
if if a man and a man are having sex with each other, it's that's not masturbation. Courtes. It's not coitus. Coitus is obviously sex between a man and a, and a woman. That's what okay. coitus is. Okay. You understand? So if a man and a man is having sex, yes, that's, if you see two dogs doing it, that don't mean they're gay. Them dogs so so how was the animals nurtured? I'm not saying that the animals were nurtured. I'm okay. not saying that the you act. I'm not saying that it being a behavior is something that unnatural. Okay. I'm saying that yes, it can happen. It does happen. But what I'm saying is, you see a dog that fuck another dog in the ass. I've seen it. I'm not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm not pro gay. Let me get you I'm my point. I'm just explaining I'm not, something. No, 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 no. Right. Let me finish. You can see a dog, and I've seen it with my own eyes. Two male dogs have sex. Well, have sex. Let me repeat that. Fuck each other in the ass. I've seen it with my own eyes. That being said, I never seen that same male dog turn down no cooch. <laughs> that, male, that same other one like nah you know what I'm saying I kind of like going and, and do a hold more no so are you saying no. it's bisexuality it's no such thing that's just terms that were created to describe behavior so it's just, letter, it's, it's, it's just sex it's just merely if you want to call it sex I it's mean, just sex it, no I'm just saying it says bisexual it ain't sex for me but female, I mean, sex for me is sex for me is with a woman you shouldn't words like heterosexual shouldn't exist when you're talking about things like human beings and fucking trees the only way you should talk about hetero, heterosexual or asexual is when you're talking about fucking amoeba and shit like that, single cell organisms. You, those, those words shouldn't even exist. Those words are, are used to describe behavior. Okay. To say that Alexander the Great was a faggot is extremely misleading. Because Alexander the Great grew up in a fucking culture where fucking boys was okay. By our standards, we call that being gay, we call that a faggot. But that nigga did not not go for chicks too. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a difference. So that makes him what? What, it makes him, him a man to have sex with a fuck another man who fucked another man. That's all it is. But he fucked both sexes. Oh, that that means he fucked women too. He's supposed to fuck women. So is that abnormal or normal? It's abnormal to me. To you? Yeah. It's I mean, abnormal it's to, to me. me. Yeah, but but again, that's my. But I don't strip those people of their humanity. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not taking away from them being human. I can totally right. agree with them being human, but what I don't agree with, I don't agree that it's something that you. But I do see are. some things that us human do is animalistic. We are animals. I say it again. We are animals. So, we are homosexuality exists in the animal world as as and as a behavior. It okay. doesn't exist as a viable way of life. Exactly okay. what I say. It does exist in nature. It happens. Fuck yeah, it happens. But it doesn't exist as a viable way of life. I remember when they had the shit about the penguins and shit. Well, oh, they make for life. Them as soon as they got around some goddamn female penguins that was in goddamn <laughs> uh, Eustace or whatever the fuck, they fucked them. You know so it's saying? sort of similar how guys go to jail. They I fuck mean, niggas while they're in jail as soon as they get home I, they get I, some I pussy. I mean, that's a, that's a completely different psychology. And that's a psychology, again, that's intense. That's something that's... that's Whereas well, inmates, way. inmate, it's unnatural in mating, yeah, I, I, in mating... That, that's an unnatural yeah. way. Human beings shouldn't even be confined like that. Right. That should be illegal. All and then they stuff. called them inmates. Yeah, but they should Inmate be, means inbreeding with uh, the same yeah. sex. They shouldn't, man. That's just... That prison, the prison system is crazy. Yeah, inmates. If, you wonder why we got all these gangs out here now. You wonder why we got all this homosexual out here now and then you keeping niggas in jail for their whole goddamn life and you wondering why you know what i'm saying because these behaviors are becoming something that we can up, explain King? away you know what i'm saying because we don't want to be that harsh to it because we didn't grow up with um dudes with gay you know what okay I'm saying? we grew up with them we can probably might even have them in our family so we don't want to be um you know yeah i'm, I'm not gonna strip nobody out of their humanity because once you do that but you can kill them without at, remorse at, at the same time though yeah, once you strip somebody of humanity, you can kill them we without to, remorse. We need to learn the question. Because you're not killing a human. Once we, I, yeah. And we now, don't look at ourselves as human, as even human. That's like when we recklessly kill each other. Because we were taught to divide. Because somebody our, stripped us of our humanity. humanity. And, our, and humanity isn't defined by Europeans. They've shown very little of it for the last 600 years. Okay, now speaking on homosexuality. I got to go to work, man. Boy, okay. Boy, Damn. All right. All right, family. Black power. I'll let no, you. I got a few more minutes. Okay. So now, now, here we go. Cause here we go. Uh huh. If we speaking on we speaking on homosexuality. Now, what's a man that says he has a woman inside of him and he wants to bring it out? I mean, that sounds pretty crazy, but he does have a woman inside of him. Every man, yeah, X Y. I mean, that's a fact. That's a fact. I'm to bring the woman out. I mean, I don't know. You can take it. That's conjecture. You know, we can. You know, there are men who say that. I mean, that sounds silly, but I don't even understand. You bring the woman out whether you want to or not. Now, because we learn behavior from women. Period. In order for them to get a sex transfer, in order for them to get a sex transfer, they have to go under an operation. Yeah, but that's just not real. So no do they? What now, that's what I'm saying. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. Bye. Do they have to put them to sleep in order to perform that operation? I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Now.
when like when the when the Bible talks about the woman being brought out of Adam, did he have to go under a sleep too? I mean, I don't did he go through an operation? I'm talking according to the narrative. Oh yeah. According to the narrative. Yeah, I would imagine so. Right. So was Adam also a man who believed he had a woman in him? Oh, I see what you're saying. That's a pretty good story. That's a pretty good question. That's a pretty know. and is Eve Adam after he has been brought out? No. Wait a minute now. No, because you know I'm trying to figure out why God no. didn't breathe the breath of life into Eve. She, I mean, according to the story, she already had it. But see, the thing from is, who? From when she from was inside, inside the man? Adam. Yeah, but see, that's a story. You know what I'm saying? And the thing that's, that's what's dangerous about that story is, you know, we, we begin not to question it. So we start to say, who came first, a man or a woman? Blah, blah, blah. So oh, I'm okay. questioning it. But look, okay, but I'm questioning it because there's a whole lot of homosexuality being accepted in religion now. It's a whole lot of so I'm wondering if the religious movement was a gay movement from its inception. No, no more than it was a, a black liberation movement from its inception, but it was used as such. You know what I'm saying? For me to say to... to the to beginning say, of the church was the beginning okay, of the I black movement? No. Oh. No, but it was fundamental in the black movement, no matter how you look at it. When? Church, Which are you talking about? In America? I'm about period. From the inception yeah, the of the church? I'm, From I'm the Council of Nicene? No, fuck all that. No, I'm trying to... Okay. Christianity in this country. In this country. Black black people, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. See, I wanted well, to clarify that. That shit unified the goddamn Europeans. They created a more homogenous Europe. So well, I just, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to clarify that. A lot more, uh, it, made, it made them a much smaller, much smaller, more cohesive unit. You know, they only spoke like three sets of languages. You did with Africa, there were, you know, hundreds of languages spoken, probably within a few hundred mile radius. It's a bit, it's a big difference. You know, that's why when Europeans came to Africa, the city had an advantage from their perspective. Yeah, they did, because they had a bit more margin than Africa at that particular point. Okay. So that's what Christianity did for them. And in a sense, you know, Christianity, it has done that for niggas because it has kept niggas, you know what I'm saying? It kept niggas. It put them in a place where they think they practice Christianity, but they're still doing African practice. They're still catching the spirit. You know what I'm saying? I think when niggas be catching and saying a humble bit and all that shit, when they catching what you call it, the tongues. When they start speaking in tongues, I think at one point they probably were speaking in late in African language. Now I would buy that. Like I would buy that only to this degree. You can be eating junk food that got a certain mineral or element in that your body is craving for. Mm -hmm. Even though it's junk food, mm -hmm. the body craves that's it good, because... That's a pretty good analogy. Right. The body craved it mm -hmm. because it registered the taste and everything yeah. with the with the, with the the um, accumulation yeah. or the acquiring but of it, that it, particular it's element. It's kind of like, like like you said. I, I think like like you can feed a dog dog food his whole life and it'll probably die of cancer. You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing with religion. It's kind of dog food. love Prepackaged pellets, right? You know, like pretty, Pepsi. pretty much what we eat anyway. You Pepsi know do got water in it. Pellets <laughs> that uh, you know that that are made, you know, that eventually kill us. You know what I'm saying? But it sustains us through a certain point in time. So we look at it as food. The same way you feed a dog, but the dog's gonna die because you've been feeding it bullshit his whole life. It's gonna die. You know, right. The same thing. But yeah, that's that's what I, I mean, see the Bible as. That's what I, mean, I see the Bible as. I mean, I see it as okay. bullshit you can look at, I mean, in book form, lacking I mean, evidence. I mean. B I B L E of of allegory. It's a uh, for it's children book. though. Not necessarily for children. Not necessarily children. You know, it couldn't if it's inspirational to that person, let them be inspired by it. But to think that something that you consider the Most High God, the Most High, so to speak, can be contained in a book is a ridiculous thing in and of itself. That but that's what some of them teach. I mean, of course. But they, I mean, they don't. We we do it out of ignorance. That tree right there has more validity in God power than any book. Ever. You know okay. what I'm saying? I worship that tree before I worship that goddamn shit. <laughs> I mean, that's just ridiculous. You know, but I don't want to. I don't want to turn nobody off. I just want people to start thinking about it. You know, that's why I said you want me to debate with somebody. I don't want to debate. Okay, they can do that, but I'd rather just engage in discourse because we're going to disagree somewhere. So, the so there's another word. There's another word called a dialectical conflict. Oh no, that's cool. Right, whatever that's wanna, cool. A dialectical know. conflict yeah. is not the emotional debate oh, or the not, rhetoric. It, it got to be rules to this thing. But it still got to be rules to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not at all down in the debates. I listen to the shit. I like them. A lot of times, I like them. You know, I like even the views I don't necessarily be, agree with. You like yeah. rap battles? Yeah, somewhat, but oh, not you, like I you used like, to. You know, I'm yeah. kinda, you know, that's not my thing anymore. But there was a time where, yeah, I was in. Okay, debates is on the same level. I know, and that's. I mean, I grew up debating. Cause I mean, that's all I ever did my whole life, bro. Right. For real, that's what I did. You we know did it when we didn't know what to talk man, about. We did it talking about, about Dallas and Dallas and the Cowboys. I used to argue with goddamn Jehovah Witnesses when I was in high school. 
I mean, when I was in middle school, nigga, you can, I mean, you can ask anybody that knew me growing up. I was with it. I knew Arabic phrases. I was all into that Islam shit. I could break the Bible down and all that shit way back in the day. Way back in the day. Remember when I was in the 10th grade, they were like, you got to dissect the fetal pig. I'm like, shit, I ain't touching it because I don't touch pork. So I came to class that day and I wrote Deuteronomy 14, verse 8. I, and the swine, because it devours the hoof, yet chew up not the cud. It is unclean unto you. You should not eat of that flesh nor touch that dead cock. And I put that shit on the board. When the teacher walked in, she was, everybody quiet. She walked in and saw that shit like, get out of my class. She knew it was me. And I wasn't touching that shit. Because I was on, I was on, I was goddamn 14, man. Huh? Right. 39. I get some in. You okay. know what I'm saying? I'm, well, I, I, I swear, you know I know you've been doing this. I swear, you know, I, it, there's, I've, I've heard, I've never heard a doctor that couldn't be questioned. So, we appreciate you coming through. You're always welcome. You feel me? Um, when you come back to New Black World Order TV for our audience, would you choose a subject, stretch out on it for us, all right? right? I mean, just, I mean, I, hopefully, you know, I hopefully, you know, it, it, what I said can be interesting enough to promote some type of discourse between, you know, people. And if anything comes up, you know, I would love to go on, you know, because I feed our people. You know, I'm not a, right. you can't just turn me on. You know what I mean? I got to be sim stimulated. Well, you know, I got, I got, got a, I got a wide uh, variety audience. Get my, get my shirt for me. I got a wide variety audience and... You know, I got some um, Prince Hall Masons that watch my joint, and um, I got one brother that I want both of y'all to do a, a video together, cool, Prince Hall, you feel me? And he might have some questions for you about this video right here. That's awesome. Okay? Yeah. All right, Black Power. Peace, bro. Peace. All right. Richmond, nigga.